Mm. Okay, about five minutes before the end of treatment, um, I get ready to, to come off and um, I get some swabs ready from the side um, and also my tape ready. my hands because um, I've been touching um, things throughout treatment. And um, just get my tapes ready. Discard that piece, it's a bit twisted, and uh, you need to make sure the tapes are long enough to go over the swabs. And um, I just tear off three long pieces for each swab. And also a smaller piece to actually um, make the swab um, when you folded it over. So I'm just going to open the pack. Put the dressing towel underneath my arm. Now, if I was in a clinic setting, um, I wouldn't be using the um, the saline that um, I had there ready for um, emergency use throughout treatment but um, there's no harm in using that, that saline in, in many ways um, it's actually better to use that saline that's been sitting there uh, with the sealed rinse connector um, because the saline um, down there has been sitting there exposed as well with, with a connector um, which is actually open as well so um, I just prefer to use what's already ready in front of me. Um, the swap that I'm creating for the uh, removal of the fistula, the arterial fistula needle, um, I tend to make a bit thicker um, because sometimes I do have um, a bit of excess bleeding there from the access post dialysis um, so I tend to use about five swabs for the arterial and uh, three, top, three swabs for the venous needle I've already checked my blood pressure just before I sit up just to make sure that I'm not going to start um, becoming lightheaded and feeling unwell. Um, we'll just have to um, wait now till the um, machine beeps. The other thing that I forgot to mention as well um, earlier on um, at the start of the video um, was the fact that I use what's called a rope ladder technique for insertion of the needles 
and all that means is that I am using uh, sharp needles to actually rotate up and down the access um, and um, that helps prevent developing um, problems with the access and excessive bulging of the access as well. Some home dialysis patients use something called a buttonhole technique, which all that means is that uh, little channels have been created in the AVF with a sharp needle which remain in place um, for the patient to insert the needles and its blunt needles um, at each treatment and um, it just makes it a bit easier for those who can't tolerate sharp needles um, and also for those who find it difficult to actually needle as well um, the other thing that I forgot to mention is that um, I don't tend to use a tourniquet um, because it's difficult with one hand to release the tourniquet and insert the needle um, but those on maintenance dialysis um, preferably should have a tourniquet because as well as it um, helping to actually um, locate the blood vessel and um, able you to palpate it better to insert the needle um, it also stabilizes the blood vessel and makes it um, less likely for the fistula to move around during the insertion of the needles so any minute now um, the machine's going to ping which notifies it's the end of treatment you should always ensure as well that you do finish your treatments that's important to actually get adequate clearance of the toxins from your body and help prevent problems in between treatments. So there's the pin of the machine and um, I'm just going to press start to start the reinfusion. and I need to make sure that I clamp the arterial line I hope you can see that the syringe that I'm not using again you need to be careful you don't just place it down on the um, on the, on the field because it's actually not sterile now so I tend to just pop it on the little tray so the connector um, is just facing away um, from anything um, from the end of it is facing away from anything now I'm just going to um, connect the rings connector on again and I do that by transferring it over that way just silence the alarm on there it's just the BP stop alarm um, and I'm going to flush the lines Be careful that there's no air bubbles going in if there are little air bubbles or just um, pull the syringe up slightly, if, the, if you keep the syringe up right as well you're less likely to introduce any air um, and now I'm just going to connect um, the substitute line back over to the arterial line to 
wash my blood back and um, you need to make sure you wash as many of the red cells possible back it's obviously um ckd patients are um are prone to anemia anyway so um you need to make sure you wash as much as you can of the red cells back um, again there's some debate um about that you know um during training you know the nurses wanted to wash back about 360 mils of saline um, but um, I've always found that 300 mils is enough uh, for me um, because obviously you don't want to um, overload yourself again too quickly with fluid so uh, it's a fine balancing act really of, um, of what you need to do On the machine it, it shows as well how much uh, fluid is being washed back. Um. Okay, just to continue from the other week um, where I was about to remove my needles because the camera went flat. Um, I'm going to now clamp the venous line and if there's any air bubbles in the syringe just flick it and hold it upright and the air bubbles will rise to the top. Then I just transfer the syringe over, hold the syringe upright and just flush the line of any excess blood and then there's a little indent on where the artificial kidney uh, sits and I just pop the venous line on there and for removal of the needles it's in reverse order to how they're inserted and um, the reason for that is if I was to actually remove the arterial one first the pressure from the venous needle would encourage um, excessive bleeding there from the arterial um, site so then I just put the swab, just firm but light pressure, not pressing on the access so as not to damage it and it's a downward motion to actually remove the needle and then I just um, apply light again but firm pressure um, to make sure there's no bleeding. My, um, my venous site doesn't actually bleed very much at all, um, usually um, for the arterial removal I would probably wait about 5, five minutes, between 5 and 10 minutes to make sure it stopped bleeding. Um, just, to, um, just to mention something I may have forgotten in the beginning of the video. The, um, the pumps on the machine, the faster they're actually um, going round, the faster the blood is actually cleaned um, and the more toxins are removed. So um, people as who have um, lines in are not able to get a very high pump speed because um, because it's not able to tolerate such a high pump speed um, and also there are different size needles depending on the individual size as well the size of the access um, which will give an increased clearance as well um, so I hope people really do consider um, 
the possibility of doing home hemodialysis if it is offered to them. It really does give the individual more control um, over their treatment and um, I think that's one of the things really when someone's diagnosed with an illness is that sense of loss of control and being able to um, do your own treatment helps give some of that control back. Um, so to actually put the other tape on I just tend to curve it round on the bit that's gone across to stop any excess tape sticking to the skin. Um, that's just one of my tips that I do. And um, I hope people um, enjoy the video um, and are able to get what information they need from it. And um, thanks for watching.